Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have a review of Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. As I don't have the book with me, you can imagine that this isn't necessarily going to be a favourable review, which is disappointing because I had been looking forward to this book for about 16 years. My interest in this came from the film that I believe the film stars Francis McDermott. When I discovered that this film had been adapted from a book, I am one of those people who decided that I'd have to read the book before I could watch the film. Now, please forgive me today for I am suffering with something of a cold and it's making this I do weird things and I apologise for that but I thought I'd draw attention to it rather than just try and get through this video pretending that this I wasn't being silly. In Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day we are following the eponymous character of Miss Pettigrew who has been something of the perpetual spinster. She's in her early 40s and has never been kissed. She was raised in the church so she has some very strict religious views that have really prevented her from going out and living life in the way in which she has seen romanticised in literature and on screen. She is also struggling with her finances having been told by her landlady that if she doesn't pay her rent by the end of the day, then she will be out on her ear. So she's feeling incredibly pleased when the employment agency she visits tells her that they have found her a position as a governess. But when she turns up to this apartment, she discovers a young woman who is something of the socialite. I believe her name is Delicia, which is a pseudonym. Of course, when she meets Delicia, she, young woman, is entertaining a man and Delicia wants him out of the house. Miss Pettigrew uses some of her wiles, things that she has learned from past people she has worked for and through cinema and literature. She takes on these characters and manages to start directing this young woman's life. In thanks for that, this young woman decides that she is going to show Miss Pettigrew a different way of life. They give her nice gowns, they give her makeup, they show her a side of life that she has missed out on now that she is middle-aged and it seems as though the world has forgotten about her. It's a very light-hearted book but I did find my attention waning a bit and the impetus to read this book kept disappearing. It felt pleasant, it felt nice, but it wasn't necessarily as grand a book as I had hoped that it was going to turn out to be. It's very dialogue heavy. We don't necessarily get great descriptions of the world that we're inhabiting. Therefore, as a reader, I almost felt still on the outside of this book without any real sense of the grandeur that was being spoken of. And part of me wonders whether this is simply because Winifred Watson was hoping that the people of the time would bring their own experiences of nightclubs and the like into this. But obviously this is now nearly a hundred years ago, so I don't actually have the required knowledge to understand what these spaces look like that she's describing by saying that they're very good or they're grand. There were some humorous moments where Miss Pettigrew doesn't know what to order in terms of drinks so she just always goes with what somebody else has ordered and she doesn't recognise that she's got inebriated because she's never had the chance to do so in her life before. She is forthright with men because she recognises that she's only going to be living the life that she's currently inhabiting for one day and she expects everything to end after this one day. She ends up creating this character for herself who is not her at all but is who she could be and I did like that discussion of identity and how we all put on a mask in order to survive in this world and her coming into her own power and gaining her own identity through realising that the people that she's emulating were people that she could have always been if she had just taken that time and given herself the chance to do so. When Mrs Pettigrew is looking to improve her life, she is thinking more about her job and having the little bit of independence. There's not so much focus as I would have expected on a relationship and a relationship being main focus of her life. However, that does get mentioned a fair bit within the novel in terms of the other women who we get to see. And even though Miss Pettigrew is only with them for a day, she's using her maturity and her knowledge 
of the way in which the world works to really get them married off. And part of me thinks, oh, this is a little light-hearted and fun, but another part is like, you don't know these people well enough to be involving yourselves in their lives in such a way. It's a little bit intrusive, like, leave them alone. Like, it almost felt like typical Karen behaviour, like, you've got to be in a relationship, you need to marry a good man, you're not doing well enough on your own, so I am going to pick the man for you and basically line you up to get married and this is going to be your life because I have decided that's the way your life should go. And part of me thinks, well, it makes sense for the character because the character has been brought up very strict church and so the fact that she's trying to manage these people's lives, it makes perfect sense. But it also leads to some offensive writing. And when I say this, I'm talking about the anti-Semitism within the pages of this book. It first gets mentioned with one of Delicia's suitors as a reason that we should not like this man. It only becomes more prevalent with a paragraph towards the end of the book where she is trying to figure out which of three men she wishes to embark upon a relationship with. And Miss Pettigrew says something rather offensive that rubs me the wrong way was the point that I decided that I was taking this book off my shelves. I don't know that I should recommend this book based on that. It's very of its time and whilst I believe that we should read these things to give ourselves a better impression of what people's opinions were within the last hundred years and it works as a historical document. It is almost nauseating to read it and see that these opinions were still there 90 years ago. If you did wish to read this book then I think it's better to go in forewarned that that is there and it's used to denigrate a person and it's used as a way to make a villain of that person, I was uncomfortable with its inclusion because there was just, there's never any need for it, but there certainly was absolutely no need for that within this book. Also, most of the men in this book are terrible anyway. Most of them are misogynists who think that it's okay to be aggressive with the women around them. As I say, it's very of the time. And unfortunately, <laughs> It led itself to being another book that I'd looked forward to and ended up disappointed. And that has been the way of most of my reading for the last 10 days. And I'm hoping that we're on an upturn now and that I'll be finding some books to read and enjoy pretty soon because this was not one of them. As I say, I finished it on Sunday and it was the first thing that went on my, in my bag to donate to the charity shop on Monday. That is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. Have you read this book? If so, please feel free to discuss it in the comments. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I apologise for being decidedly nasal today because until next time, that is all.